Good afternoon. Good afternoon. afternoon. Welcome to uh, Delhi and uh, Spots On. Thank you. Yeah. Dato, you are the Uchu, uh, the grandchild of the great Tun Dato Petinggi uh, Demong Juga. And he was one of the uh, founding fathers of uh, of the country, lah, the Malaysia. Now that 16th of September is coming, and uh, your Aki, your great Aki, was instrumental in building uh, the country. And now you are one of the lawmakers and also a cabinet and federal government. How do you see his contribution to the country and also contribution to Sarawak as compared to before and also now? Yeah, uh, well, you mentioned 16th of September. Well, yeah. the significance is that it's what we call today as a Hari Malaysia or the Malaysia Day. Yeah. Because 16th of September is the day when Malaysia was formed officially, right? right. Yeah. And uh, my grandfather, Tunjuga, was uh, one of the signatories to the Malaysian Agreement. Yeah, as his grandson, I am, of course, very proud of his contribution. Um, as we learned from history, I was very young then. And I uh, can't remember much at the early days, but later on, uh, through growing up with him and uh, later on through history, mm. yes, uh, I'm very proud of his contribution to the uh, formation of the country and also to what Malaysia is today. His contribution, yeah. of, of course, is yeah. to help to <clears throat> establish Malaysia. It wasn't easy, as we learned from history. Uh, there were many uh, views that Malaysia shouldn't be formed and we had uh, threats from uh, foreign countries like uh, Indonesia and Philippines. And, uh, and of course, leaders uh, uh, of the various state origin at those times, Sabah, Sarawak, Singapore and Malaya, uh, not everyone were up to the idea of Malaysia. But at the end of the day, Malaysia was formed because the majority or the voices of the majority through leaders of the day, and my grandfather was one of those people <coughs> that matter in the sense that because he was representing the Daya uh, or Iban of the center of Sarawak, but Narajang area, uh, the voices and the opinions of the people. So it became known as one of those important um, factor uh, to convince the British government through the uh, Lord Cobalt Commission, uh, because Lord Cobalt Commission was going all over the country, uh, or rather all the different regions of what Malaysia is today, uh, to seek opinions and to understand the true uh, feelings and opinion of uh, people of various uh, ethnic groups. Yeah, Dato, uh, say if your grandfather would be still around, still around at the moment, mm. now, mm. do you think he might be so happy to see the development taking place? Well, uh, frankly, um, from what I see surrounding me today and uh, the environment that I am uh, playing my part as a member of the cabinet in Malaysia, uh, with the government of the day today, and also having uh, some parts in uh, political scenarios in, in Sarawak. Yeah. Personally, I think if I knew my grandfather well, and I think I, I, I knew him quite well, I don't think he is very, we would be very happy. I have to be very frank with him. Because a lot of his aspiration and his vision at that time, uh, perhaps today, in today's context, uh, may not materialize as what he would have really looked at or for at that time. Why do I say that? Because, yeah. Yeah. you know, um, his uh, famous, uh, yeah, he has a famous um, saying, saying <laughs> nah? yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, he was, uh, even at that time, he, he looked far ahead mm -hmm. and he has a vision and he made a cautionary remark. Uh, he said, in Iban, Ana Malaysia to baka tebu, eh? mani is tepun tabar hujong. You know, when he said that, surely it came into his mind that, look, Malaysia then has a lot of promises. A lot of good things yeah, happening as time go by and what the Malaysia will become a great country. But are we truly one now? In many ways, yes, we have developed a lot of physical development all over the country, especially in Kuala Lumpur, Baklang and big cities. But do we hear a truly contagious people? No. There are a lot of voices uh, from representatives, from ordinary people, from almost every sector uh, saying that 
Sarawak Sabah still too far lagging behind. Yeah. Who to blame? Well, let's not point fingers at everywhere. It's, it is almost everyone's uh, is to blame or had been who had been around were to blame because we have not um, over the years coordinated this properly. That's why I think that if he were to be around today, yes, uh, he would see a lot of uh, development, but maybe not to what he had expected it to be. Why? Let's put one simple example. It took about 50 years for the road to connect Kapit to Cebu to the rest of Sarawak, for that matter, because Cebu is connected uh, to the trunk road that has been around for what, 40, 40 years already. But Kapit, we are just about to be connected, you know? And it's uh, going to be connected it's soon. It's going to be connected because, right. it, but it is not officially connected in the sense because right. the road is still under construction until maybe about a month's time. So, why did it have to take so long uh, to build that? But having said that, I'm not saying there's no development at all. That wouldn't be fair to the government of all these years. There have been development, yeah. We have more schools, we have better schools than in the past. We have better facilities in the hospital. Uh, we have towns have grown bigger than in the past, of course. Tapi, I would like to put it as one of my friends um, who said to me, Alex, jangan kata tak ada pembangunan, ada, tapi belum lengkap. So I like to think that way. Yes, we have had uh, some development, yeah, but not yet to the level or to the point of achievement where we think that yeah, it's, it's satisfactory. So if you take stock of all this, this is talking about rural Sarawak. Right. Sabah is the same, yeah. Even some parts in Semenanjung, yeah, in the real interior uh, where there should be more roads, we have not been able to provide the roads and. 24 hour electricity. So, 50 years, 60 years, uh, well, 57 years now, isn't That's it? Right. Uh, Malaysia, uh, we still have uh, still a lot of things to do uh, to ensure that we have, let's say, 100% of the basic utilities uh, uh, services uh, extended to the people. Dato, uh, now uh, Sarawak is under GPS, under Chief Minister Datuk Patinggi Abang Abdul Rahman uh, Zahri Tun Openg. Yeah. And he's leading Sarawak towards a developed state by 2030. Yeah. How do you find his leadership trying to pull as many Sarawakians and as many parts of Sarawak to be developed? From what my own experience and what I hear along all along those years uh, before now, the remarks, uh, the opinion of him at that time were, well, he may not really be a good one because he's uh, orang kucing, orang bandar. He seemed to be seen as somebody not understand enough problems of the rural and uh, uh, he is kind of a, someone who's quite decoupled with the realities in the rural. Uh, that was uh, the kind of impressions that people had on him. But look at him. As soon as he ascended uh, the, and, uh, the position and became the chief minister, I remember very well. Within just um, three months, he came to Kapit, which is a rural town where I represent, uh, a remote area, so to speak. Just three months later, in April, you know, what did he do? Significant uh, thing that he announced. When he came to Kapit, he announced the formation of Orda, Upper Region Development Agency. When he was in Kapit at that time announcing that, he thought about not just to develop Kapit's division through Urda. He thought about the same concept for those people living in Baram, Barrio, the highland. So he formed. He also announced at the same time the formation of Highland Development Agency. And he also thought about people in the rural Bakalalat area, Lawas area, Limbang. So he also announced Northern Region Development Agencies. And then he said, OK, a little bit more a developed area like uh, Beton Sarike, mm -hmm. he said, OK, maybe they already have better infrastructural uh, development, but the social economy aspect well needs to be intensified. So he announced this region as food basket, mm -hmm. what he expects this area to be more involved in producing um, food products uh, that can bring social economic benefit and also um, to assist the country or the state rather on the food industry. The point is, Previously, without Urda, it was top-down, right. being forced, pushed to us. Sometimes, we don't even need right. the project. Right. 
But now under this concept of Urda, huh, it is bottom up, which is more effective and more target or beneficiary oriented, which should be the case in the first place. So to me, this whole idea, this whole way of doing things by Datuk Pertinggi Abang Johari is a game changer. So by 2030, so, the vision is that. So yeah, so the bottom line is by 2030, uh, his target line for Sarawak to be bet, um, more developed than it is now. I think, yes, I think, and, and he will achieve it. And I think all of us, uh, all Sarawakians, mm -hmm. must uh, play our part and let us all help the government or his government or him to achieve uh, the, his vision for 2030 for Sarawak. Dato, uh, you are the uh, Secretary General of uh, GPS and PBB and also MP of Kapi. Rumors has it that come to a state election, you might be, you might be standing. Is it true? I might be. You might be contesting. I might be contesting. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. I put it this way: I am a party man. Yeah. So I abide by what the party think is best for the party, or if it is best, if it is of any good for the state. I will put myself, render my service to the state and through the party. So I like to think that I'm a disciplined party man. But the rumours is not not there yet. Is I, I don't know, you said rumours, so you <laughs> must have heard of the rumours. Question, <laughs> sir. <laughs> yeah. Dr. Uh, last but not least, uh, you have any message for uh, uh, for all Malaysian? And also, uh, you know, are we going to celebrate Malaysia Day? Oh yeah. yeah, Hari Malaysia yeah. Yeah. on the 16th. Yeah. Yes, <clears throat> I will say this to all Malaysians. You know, yeah. uh, let us celebrate Hari Malaysia in a meaningful way. Uh, we are blessed that we are still a country that is endowed with a natural wealth, uh, natural environment that is where. It's still comfortable to live in, you know. We are safe, even with the problem of COVID-19, you know. We are a country that is considered an example uh, how the problem of uh, the pandemic uh, is handled through the government of the day. So there are many reasons for us to celebrate Hari Malaysia. Despite there may be still shortcomings, uh, still many rooms for improvement to make things better, uh, to make our country even better than it is now. But as it is, we have still have a lot of reasons to celebrate. So my message is let us celebrate meaningfully Hari Malaysia. And then let us also be uh, responsible to our country. Yeah? Do not dwell too much on matters, on issues, on topics that can actually cause us disunity, cause us problems, especially when it disrupts harmony. Yeah? I mean, too much into uh, religious matter, too much into differences in the ethnicity, but too much into things that where we are different uh, and uh, we over highlight it in such a way negatively would bring us no good at all, you'll be damaging. So why not, you know? Let's look at Malaysia ahead positively. There's still very much uh, to offer in the country. So let's be responsible Malaysian. Yeah? To me, being responsible Malaysian meaning uh, think conscientiously. If we know something's wrong, don't do it, don't say it. So if we know something is good, that can be meaningful, can be helpful, do it. Then we will be more responsible as Malaysia. Not only be more prihatin, but be more responsible. Be good Malaysian. Selamat Hari Malaysia.